All right, I got it. You ready? Yo, Krubies, welcome to the first ever, I guess this is the first ever, episode of the new HMC Studio segment, Crooked Tripod with Erica and Josh. I put you first. We did put you first because you are the greatest. Oh, thank you. Uh I'm so uh honored, but really, you're the best. Oh, thank you. My heart is just This wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you, so... (sighs) It's funny. That's what that's what Abby told me when she got pregnant, but she didn't say it as nicely. <laughs> <laughs> she Not <wasn't>... as nicely. <laughs> <laughs> the second time, yes, uh, when she called me screaming at me as I was driving down the highway in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, that she was pregnant again. 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 Yes. But then we got Charlie, and it made all the world whole. It made the family complete, completed. Nice. Then I had my gonads taken out. And now you are definitely complete. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize they were going to take them out. They like took them out and they like wiggled them in front. Like, okay, here you go, sir. You're free to go. And yeah. then just threw them at the garbage can. It was crazy. Style. I was honestly upset at first because he like shot him at the can, but he said Kobe. He was like Kobe when he did it. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, that's, you know what? Touche. Touche. Nonetheless, I'm joking. Touché. But we decided to change the name of the episode to give it a proper name. I feel like before we were just throwing things around. We were. We have our own little segment we do. going on here. This is a whatever goes kind of thing. That's true. And HMC Studios is officially in season five. So wow. here we go. So we've got uh, a Horror Movie Crew podcast episodes. We've got Crooked Tripod episodes. We've got HMC Studios Presents episodes. We've got all of it. A lot. You are one compact podcast, sir. We. It's a we thing. It's not just me. I'm true. just here. I'm just here with a You're greasy... You're just here for the, for the episodes? I'm just here for the party and the greasy forehead. Look at this thing. I just took a shower, too, dude. Oh, man. Look at this I hair. I feel it. Huh? I feel the grease. I'm getting a haircut in the morning. Now, look at this. This thing, this is vacation hair. Vacation Josh hair. Look at it. <laughs> look how long it is, dude. That is long. I'm like a hippie. It, was... it looks so crazy without... What is it? I'm sorry. You don't use gel. It's... What is it? The palm... Ah, pomade, yes. But actually, that pomade. that is a great segue right into our conversation. All of the <laughs> Krubies just got, patron Krubies, just got uh, like almost 20 minutes of behind the scenes. We talked about our uh, time off, um, Erica's clutter. We talked about, um, then we got into Eric. our uh, age and how we're feeling older and um, our, our energy is down. Yes, I know this is supposed to be a, a podcast about horror movies and entertainment, but um, I would I would love to take a poll someday. And out of all the listeners we get, the hundreds of listeners, downloaders every uh, week, um, how many actually tune in to hear the horror movie content versus mm-hmm. just hearing us talk? What do you? What if you had to guess? Hmm. I I'd, I'd like to say it's listen to us talk because we end up talking a lot more mm-hmm. non horror. Mm-hmm. And in this particular behind the scenes, like I went a little personal there. So it's, oh. it's just it's fun to open up and maybe you don't know. You don't know how people maybe they're going through something and they relate to something we say or they're like, oh, my God, I feel old, too. That's true. And, you know, you don't know. I, I'd i like to say that they prefer us talking about everything else but horror. I think so, too. I think I asked this yeah. uh I asked this question with an answer already in mind. So I put you on the spot, but yeah, I, so I did a little bit of geek work. So I'm trying to pull this Mm. cord out of the back of my pants. Do share, share the back of my pants or share the statistics that I came up with. The stats that you came up with. Okay. All right. Just checking. Okay. (laughs) We're in the regular episode. Now you've got to keep it clean. Yes. This this isn't only fans. Okay. Calm down. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Seth told me today I need to start an only fans. Uh, about I don't know. He was just like, you should start an OF, and I was like, what is an OF? He's like an O-F? only an only fans. I was like, oh, okay. is that still a thing? Oh yeah, very much. Thing, so. Very much. Oh, so okay. yes, I yeah, gone. You hear all these clicking going on? I, um, I did hear. I'm that. sorry, I haven't recorded in a while, so my chair is all out of whack. I just, I don't know how to stand in front of the camera. I have um, OCD anyway, so I'm always touching things. What am I talking about? I don't even uh, the statistics. Oh, so out of every 100 downloads, um, Mm -hmm. I have figured out that about, I think, about 80% of the people tune in just to hear whatever we're talking about. 
Okay. And there's like a 20% variant in there of people that it's very episode or uh, movie driven. So like in the news is very consistent. Okay. Horror Movie Crew Podcast is very consist consistently hits a certain number. And then if it's, um, di- it's based on the movie, it may be more or maybe less than that number. So I think I've yeah. figured it out to where it's about... 80 20 80 that tune in all the time no matter what and 20 that the 20 percent that tune in based on what the movie is and that may that makes sense because i also do that if it's a movie i haven't heard of i may or may not listen or if it's a movie i have heard of but haven't seen but don't want it spoiled i won't Mm. listen yes and i was always of the mindset and i always was trying to push the group to do new stuff And I've come to realize that a lot of the time, those episodes at first only they get lower or fewer downloads than like an older movie. And I think it's because a lot of people that haven't seen the movie yet don't listen to the episode. But those seemingly um, are the ones that later do better long term. So like for short term downloads, and I'm getting into like the nerd ratio of me pulling (laughs) all these, like the newer movies are statistically don't do as good as an older movie at first, but long term yeah. they do better than an older movie. I've seen that happen to us as well because we'll do one that's just released in the theater, and I'm like, why aren't the numbers higher? Like it's a new movie, but it makes sense because if you haven't gone to see it, unless you like spoilers, why would you listen to the episode? That's true. That so I learned that also. Very true. But that's what I've come to realize. So nonetheless, I don't know why any of that matters. Anyway, all the crewies just got like 20 minutes of behind the scenes. We talked about my ice pod that I have and how I'm trying to talk Abby into letting me get a sauna. But back to the energy thing. Yes, I feel like it gives me a ton of energy. And I think our family is starting to think that we're hippies because like <laughs> they like laugh at the ice bath. Like, why would you want to sit in cold water like 50 to 60 degrees. Sometimes my buddy, Tyler, his is like in the 40s. He's doing like 42 because his is actually outside in the elements. Mine is in the garage. So the garage is not heated. Um, So right now, mine is like 50 degrees, 49, 50 degrees right now because it's so cold here in Ohio right now. His is outside. So his has been like in the 40s. Oh, no. And he's doing like three, three minutes or so. I'm doing like five to 10 minutes at 50 degrees. That was going to be my question. How long do you sit in this water? I I don't think I would last more than seconds in that. Yeah, yeah. That's about oh what Seth God. tells me. That's how, how long he lasts on Friday nights. Um, when him and hey, his, hey. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the I've so I've read different different reviews on it, right? And from yeah. what I can tell, like the optimal time is anywhere from five to fifteen minutes. Wow. So okay. I started out doing three minutes at like 55. Mm-hmm. My water's never been colder than, uh, or I'm sorry, it's never been warmer than 60 degrees because we have a well, so the water comes out of the ground. So it's generally around 60 degrees when you put it in. It gets colder. Oh, okay. um, so I started at like three minutes and I did five minutes. Then I was on the phone one day talking to a coworker when I got in and I just went for 10 minutes and it wasn't that bad. So oh, you were distracted? Yeah, I think so. So hmm. I've been doing uh, anywhere from five to 10 minutes depending on, how long I get in and whatnot. But the key is to keep, you got to keep your hands warm because your hands are like the thinnest part, right? So you've got to, what I have done is, and I, I, I didn't come up with this. I read it. It was a trick that someone had suggested. You cup your hands inside in between like your legs, like your leg pits, right? Okay. Uh, like behind your knees. Yeah. So you put them in there like your fingers and then your fingers don't get cold uh, hmm. as quick. Because they, those, usually those are freezing. That's the worst part is your fingers and your toes. The toes I can deal with, but the fingers suck. So you cup them underneath your knees. And then, uh, yeah, you just you just kind of hang out. Uh, mm. I'm all for getting more energy, but I don't know. Tell you, it's three minutes. Dude. You can do anything for three minutes. Would it be wise to try this in the shower? It's probably not the same, right? It's not, but that is how I started. So that is that was the mm. deal. Abby was like, if you can do cold showers, start doing cold showers. And if you really do want to do this, then we'll get the ice pot. So I started doing that Got every it. day. I did uh, three minutes in the shower. So I would take my shower, turn the hot water all the way off, wait for the water to get cold. And then I would just walk into the water and then basically like rotate every 30 seconds like a rotisserie yeah. chicken. Right. <laughs> 
like a rotisserie chicken. But at first I thought that was terrible. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cold, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then I got the ice bath and I started doing that. And then um, when I travel, I can't obviously take the, take the cold plunge with me. So I do those on the road and it's just not, it's not the same at all. And do you feel, so how long have you been doing this already? More um, or less. When did over I? Over a month, right? It's been over a month. Yeah. I try to do it three to five days a week. And I know you're doing the the stretching, but do you think that's also helping you with pain? Yes, because I've think heard it is. It can, you could do hot or cold mm -hmm. for pain. Um, well, it's supposed to lower inflammation. I think is what it is. is it lowers your yeah. inflammation. So yes, I would say this with along the stretching for sure. Because yeah. over the break, I seemingly forgot that I like to work out. I don't know what happened. We were we have just been so busy over the holidays, right? Yeah. That I um didn't work out for like five days straight in my back, mm. it, which means I didn't stretch. I stretch after I lift every or work out and my back was shot. Like and yeah. it only took five days for it to revert back to the way it was prior to all this. So it's like, you have to do it every day. That's the problem with it, with that. It's so bad. It's, it's so easy for your body to revert back, but not go forward. Right? Like you do all this work and all it takes is apparently, let's say in this example, your five days and oh, the back is back. The back so is annoying. back, baby. Yes. <laughs> Dude, the back is back. Yeah. I anyway. may have to try the cold shower thing because if it helps with energy and back pain, then it might be worth. I don't know if I'd be able to do the plunge. I don't it's know. not for everybody. I'm trying to get my mom to come do yeah. it. She won't do it. She's like, no, I'm not doing it, Joshua. <laughs> if she does it, I'll try it. Okay, you have to go buy one though. I guess you could try to go somewhere where they have them. I guess you can go places mm. that have them now, but or you can fill a bathtub with ice. That is what I would do if you want to try the plunge. I would fill the bathtub with just cold yeah. water. Just do it with cold water first. So you get those some ice yeah. in, I guess. But I don't know. Yeah. That's anyway, a... that's that's what I've been up to, dude. But I think anyway, I think everybody thinks that we're hippies. We got the the cold plunge. Um, we're buying like all grass fed organic beef. We're uh, the eggs are all organic, uh, free range chicken from free range chicken. Like everything is like all natural shampoos and deodorant. Like everything is like, we're trying to cut out all the garbage. Let me tell you though, eggs and meat. I notice a difference when you buy the, what did you the grass fed, grass fed or farm fresh eggs. Yes. They do make a difference, especially with eggs. Cause I feel like you can really see the difference you can they're so yellow yes it's beautiful it's like oh my god that's what it's supposed to look like yes. who knew isn't that weird it's like your eggs are so yellow they're like it's a dark yellow it's weird at first like the kids are like what's yeah. wrong with these eggs i'm like they're that's what they're supposed to look like i know and they taste so good when they're mm -hmm. like that that's when i love a good fried egg mm -hmm. like that because then you can see the the you know the bright or dark yellow, mm -hmm. almost orange sometimes. It is. It's almost like an orange. You're right. Delicious. So I'm on that bandwagon too. I've been doing that for a while with eggs and um, with meat because I feel like with meat specifically, I like to try to cut out as much crap as possible. Mm. And uh, like products, shampoos and stuff, I try to use some of that stuff. Deodorant, I can't. I can't find a <laughs> dude. It's rough I at first. Use right? Old spice, huh? As it's rough at first, though. To be honest, like the first two weeks, it's like uh, you're applying uh, lighter to your armpits. Yeah, I can't. I have this thing. I don't want to smell, so I don't know if I can do that. I actually I mean, you don't and I converted. Smell, but oh, but I don't listen when I if I do this and I'm like, oh shit, ah, no, <laughs> <laughs> like I get so paranoid. Like I switched from female, right? Quote unquote, female deodorant. Uh -huh. I use Old Spice because it's the only thing that actually in my head works. Interesting. Interesting. For me. Hmm. Yeah. It, so. it, the transition from the regular to the all natural was rough. But I, from the way I understand yeah. it, it's actually because your body is like detoxing. That's what I've heard too. I have heard that. And then eventually it does work. Well, I mean, it's one. not that it doesn't work. Like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't stink, but like my armpits yep. were on fire. Ugh. Like for a week. <laughs> it was awful. Like I almost quit. I was like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And then like it yeah. just stopped hurting. I don't know. I can't do it. Yeah. No, nah, it's not for everybody. I get it. But yeah, yeah. apparently we are a bunch of hippies here at the commune. You need a Birkenstocks now. 
I, I don't know what that is, but what is it? <laughs> Those are, um, I call them like the ultimate hippie shoe. They're, I'm sure you've seen them once, once you really realize what they look like. They're literally a flat sandal. Oh, interesting. That, that they're, they have these two buckles. Like they literally look like hippie shoes and they last forever. They're a hundred bucks or more. And they're, hmm. you're like, why the hell does this cost so much money? But supposedly they mold to your foot and they last forever, but they're like, they were very popular among hippies. I don't think so. I could do that because of my, my feet issues. Like my, uh, mm. I have to have like a very uh, supported shoe. I did get two new pair of Vans shoes for Christmas though. And I'm very excited about them. Very nice. I got a new pair of New Balance. Oh, nice. They are nice. They're very, they're neutral. So I got shoes too. Okay. I mean, hey, nothing Very screams nice. that we're in our mid-30s as us discussing the new shoes we got for Christmas. I know. I got a, me a, I got a digital Bluetooth meat thermometer. You can't beat that. That's a necessity. Can't wait to try that. Dude, that's going to be... That's a game changer. You don't have to be out there. You can just set it in there and go play games and watch your thing. You're like, okay, it's not done yet. Not done yet. Right. Damn, right. The, the, yeah, this is when you know you're an adult and old. Yeah, I'm a little jealous, but we didn't even say what this episode was. So on this no. episode, <laughs> the first ever episode of Crooked Tripod, we are yep. going to be discussing our favorite horror movies set in winter. Did I say that right? You got it. Because <laughs> I, I, I am you today and I was like, hey, yep. <laughs> what did we say we were ranking on this episode today? <laughs> Is it movies that are take place in the winter? Is it movies you like to watch in the winter? Like, yep. what are we doing here? And then I was like, I was like, I don't even think I like any horror movies set in the winter. So then I was thinking, and I was like, all right, I have to come up with a list here. Because then I was jokingly asked, I was like, can I just like do Harry Potter movies? Because I know <laughs> those are for the most part set in the winter, at least the first couple. They are. And yeah. um, you were like, no, you can't. So anyway, no. um, I have a list. I don't. No. How of, hard was this? It seemed like this was a hard task. This has been the hardest list for me to come up with. Um, how I about figured. how about you? Uh, no, it wasn't for me. <laughs> but I had a feeling for you because, of course, I Google, uh, you know, winter mm. horror movies just to see, make sure I'm not missing something. And I'm like, has Josh really seen any of these? I don't know. And I, so the way I put my list together is I sit down with no technology. I, I have okay. a blank piece of paper here. I handwrite mine too. And I sit here that's and I write down all the movies that come to mind initially. Cause that's how I know that yep. they, they meant something to me is I can recall them immediately. And yep. then after I have a list and before I put them in order, then I go and I Google like, Horror, a horror movie set in winter or whatever our yeah. theme is. And um, that didn't help me at all, by the way. <laughs> like yeah. most of these movies didn't even come up on that list. Really? Those, those okay. lists, no. Like, that, no, not mm -hmm. at all. Um, so I'm this should be in interesting, this. dude. It should be. And of course, we're starting with a ranking episode because, I mean, I don't know about you at this point, but I do love lists. I will always say that, but, uh, and I figured it was appropriate because we're still in winter. Well, you are in winter. I am not. That's true. You don't not, even get a winter. So then I was like, is this even no. really fair of me to ask you to do since you don't even really get a winter? Well, we had, um, 50 degree weather this weekend. That's my cold plunge is 50 degrees. Come on. I know. I know. Ashley, back me up here. We had some nice weather. For like two days. Is 50 maybe one. nice weather? Huh? Is 50 nice? That's nice? Or is that cold for you? It's nice because it's not humid. You can actually go outside and not be sweating to death the mm. minute you step outside your door. And it's just, I, I feel like if Florida was like this all the time, 60 degrees, 50s, mm -hmm. it'd be just perfect in my opinion. Yeah, well... But I know that's not what people go to Florida for. That's so. true. I go to Florida when it's hot, twice a year when it's ungodly hot. Godly hot. Um, so that shows you how stupid I am. But yeah, we are in the depths of winter. It's, it's uh, almost mid-January now. What is the 10th? The 4th? The 6th? What is today? 4th. The 4th. So actually, January just started. Shows you how stupid I am. Um, 
And yeah, it was cold today. It was in the 30s, I think. It was 27 when I woke up. The Alexa show next to my Ooh. bed um, said it was 27 degrees. Good morning, Josh. It's 27 degrees out with a high of 38. That's what she told me. Wow. Yeah. That's cold. I'm living in the digital age. What can I say? That is true. Yeah. She can even speak to you. Mm. And it's a show, so there's a screen on it and everything. She shows mm-hmm. me things. Not dirty things. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it if Alexa wanted to get a little dirty with me in the morning. I'm okay with that. I wouldn't turn her away. I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. That's all I'm saying. Hey, sometimes that's the best way to start the day. No, if I do not allow eating in my bed. It's disgusting. No, I, I mean... The worst thing in the, the world, Erica, is to roll over and lay on a Cheez-It. Oh, no, no. I agree. I don't like eating in bed. Okay. Ugh. Just saying. Just saying. So here's... I Full disclosure, okay? I don't know if you're ready for this or not. I'm ready. With the exception of my number one, mm-hmm. I don't really know of the order that these are going to go in. And to be quite <laughs> honest, I don't have them in an order. I have check marks next to the ones that are in the top five. That's fair. I, I had a feeling this was going to be a challenge, which is what made it more interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. So. <sighs> huh. I okay. think you should go first with. Whatever this order of operations is for you. It's just going to be a la carte, okay? Like when you go to the Mexican restaurant and you don't want one of their predetermined uh, meal numbers, a number one, which is typically always a Speedy Gonzales, um, you know, with the taco, yeah, the enchilada and the rice or the burrito and the rice or whatever it is. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. want that, okay? I'm going to go a la carte. I'm going to pick from the menu and I'm going to make and my make it own. Your own. My own number five. Uh, so anyway, my first honorable mention. How many honorable mentions do you have? Uh, honestly, two. I have two. I could put two. <sighs> okay. Uh, in that case, why don't you do your first honorable mention, <laughs> and then I'll do my honorable mention. Then you can do your second honorable mention, and then I'll do my number five. Okay. My okay. first honorable mention is going to be a found footage that I watched recently, and it's called Devil's Pass. Ooh, never heard of it. I figured. <laughs> not a lot of people have, I think. It's not very well known, but it literally takes place in a snowy mountain in Russia. Is the so, name of the mountain Devil's Pass? The It's not. It's It's... Dyatlov's Pass is what it's called, but the Devil's Pass is that um, there was a explorer team back in the 50s, I think, mm-hmm. 40s, 50s. They went, they mysteriously died without explanation. So, of course, the found footage is a group of students going to find out how, why, because, of course, they're going to solve the mystery. Of course. Uh, spoiler alert, they do not. And uh, madness ensues in the snow. Now I don't even have to watch it. You don't. And we did a whole episode on it over on on my podcast. So there you go. You can always go get the spoilers there. <laughs> so so did you forget the name of your podcast or did you not want to just try to do a shameless plug right in the middle of this podcast? I didn't know if I could do a shameless plug. You can do whatever you want. This is equally 50-50 <laughs> your show as well so why don't you tell everybody what the name of the podcast is in case they want to go listen to the episode (laughs) on the deluca's pass or deluca what was it what was the name of the russian mafia guy well the movie is called devil's pass about diatlov's pass which that was it i think it happened in real life i don't know go listen to the episode on the other podcast I co-host, and it's a uh, horror cafe podcast. Goodness, go. way to make that awkward. Shameless dude. plug right there. Way to bring up politics at the family dinner, dude. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Okay, my first on my only honorable yeah. mention. And I'm only doing this because you begged me. You're like, please, can we do an honorable mention? I don't feel like all of these movies need to be on here. I have to talk about every one of them. Um. My, uh, I'm just going to pick one. Uh, <laughs> Any mini, mighty mo. Do, 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 do. Never Hike in the Snow is going to be my honorable mention. This is a short uh, film. It is a fan film. Mm-hmm. You can watch it. I think it's called Womp Stomp Productions did this. Okay. It is on YouTube and it is a Friday the 13th fan oh, film okay. about a um, 
photographer who goes out into the woods at Camp Crystal Lake, and be, lo and behold, he runs into Jason. And that's what this It's like 31 minutes, and for it being a fan film that is mm -hmm. um, a low-budget, you know, indie film, it's very well done. They have three of them out now. Uh, the other ones are called Never Hike Alone 1 and 2. The second one, I think I told you guys about in the group chat, it came out... Um, a few months ago, I think, right? Yes, whenever I was in Indianapolis, whenever that was. I watched it at the hotel after dinner, um, after I watched the woman get drug out of the Texas Roadhouse with her kids screaming, which was very awkward to watch. Um, <laughs> and then the police officer that had to deal with it sat behind me at the bar filling out his paperwork. Um, hmm. Awkward. Anyway, and then all this like servers got come talking. It was very weird. I think I already talked about this. Nonetheless, uh, yeah. Uh, never hike alone. I'm sorry. Never hike in the snow, which is the snow Ooh. version of never hike alone. If you guys have not seen those, you do like slashers. If you do like Friday, the 13th movies, I highly suggest watching them. They're all free on YouTube. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Sweetness. Very nice. Well, if you only have one honorable mention, I'm fine with jumping into a la carte. Well, for you, a la carte. <sighs> I mean, that's fine. I mean, if you'd like to go first, I like how you went in there. You're just like, listen, Josh, I'll go first. I'll take control of the route. <laughs> take the reins. I'll be Santa Claus. You just be the little elf yeah. in the back, handing me little presents out of my bag, and I will do all the heavy lifting, and that is fine. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to start with number five. It wouldn't make any sense to start with number one. Now, would it? It would not. All, all right. right. <laughs> number five is a movie you loathe, and that's okay. Can you guess what it is? I want to say it's The Shining, but like I thought that'd be your number no. one. So I don't know why. If it's number five, I'll be shocked. No, and I don't think you hate. You don't loathe The Shining. Eh, you I gave don't... it a you gave it a middle rating. That's not loathing. Okay. Um. Wasn't too bad. Come on now. You said you had a group chat named after this movie. Oh, The Lodge. The Lodge. Yes. What a god awful turd of a movie. I hope that's not your number five. That is my number five. Ugh. Yes. Come on. You knew that was going to be in there. You knew. I tried to forget you about knew. it. Yes. Well, number the lodge is my number five. I mean, you have to admit, though, that is a very snowy movie. It is all in snow. It is. It's all in snow. It is the winter version of Midsommar. It is pretentious. It doesn't make any sense and it's dumb. But I uh, understand that you there's a, actually the majority of the people I believe that I talk to um, like that movie. Yeah. I mean, I do like it. Uh, I think that's a pretty good comparison that it's, a what did you say? A Midsommar in the snow? Yes. A little uh, shorter, at least Much. significantly shorter. It is an hour and a half ish. I mean, I liked it. I thought the kids were pretty demented. They messed with the wrong chick in this, not to spoil everything. Um, but if you are looking for a winter horror, I mean, this literally like the so my top five, like there is no room for sunshine in these movies. Like it is just plain snowing in mm. every single movie. So uh, I think these are all pretty appropriate. But if you're into psychological, artsy, midsummer ish horror, then The Lodge you would probably like. Yeah, if, that's, if that Hulu. is your thing, then yeah. I, I think it was a Hulu yeah. movie, wasn't it? I'm not sure. So this is one of those movies that got uh, faded out because I think it came out around the pandemic. Mm. So it ended up on Hulu because I remember hearing about it, but then never got to go see it because of the pandemic, I think. But I could be wrong, but pretty gotcha. sure it's on Hulu. Yeah, I... Don't like that movie. I'm sorry. It's the whole bad parenting thing from the beginning it's to bad. the end of the movie. This dad is just the biggest idiot in the world. Like, why would you he is. one? Like, I understand like people change and that people grow and that you can't base somebody's current state on how they grew up as a child, but you kind of can because that's how they grew up. Um, yeah. And then you bring them around your kids whose mom just killed her. Like, it's just stupid. It's crazy. It's me that this even It is happened, bad parenting, but. though. I do agree with you there. And then the fact that all of a sudden this one... Look, I'm just dogging on your movie choice. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm sorry. I'm going to okay. quit. Um, I just don't like that movie. And you knew it. And you, I feel like you put it in there to mess with me. A little bit. It's fine. Um, 
Okay. Here's your a la carte. <laughs> My number five. I know what number one and two are going to be, I think, but number five. Okay. Number five is a movie set in the winter. Yes. This is a Taylor Sheridan movie starring Jeremy Renner. It is Wind River. Have you ever seen Wind River? Mm-mm. It is about the most depressing movie you may ever watch. Oh. So Jeremy Renner works on okay. a Native American uh, reservation. And it is okay. Winter. I forget where it takes place at, but it mm. is frozen tundra riding snowmobiles around. So he is, I believe, a sheriff or something. And there is a death on the Native American reservation. So they bring him in. But then the death actually happened on some like government site. So they have to bring in the FBI or somebody. And the FBI agent is none other than uh, Olson, not not the, the other Olson. The, Scarlet those. Witch. Oh, yes. Elizabeth? Elizabeth Olsen. I'm 99% oh. sure that's her. I'm going to look it up, though, because now I feel like maybe it wasn't, and I'm lying. But I'm like 99% sure it's Olivia. Uh, I always call her Olivia Olsen. No wonder I'm like, who's Olivia Olsen? Like, nah. the way you said it, I was like, I should know who this is. Nah. I don't know. Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to look it up, though. IMDb. Anyway, yeah. um. So she comes in, and then, I mean, it's like the tundra, dude. It is freezing. Mm. She's not prepared for any of this. And then, as they, um, as they uncover what is going on, so it's like a who done it. Yeah, Elizabeth Olsen, uh, Wind River, 2017, starring Jeremy Renner. Let me see where they're at, just so you know. Um, mm -hmm. So a wildlife officer who is haunted by a tragedy that happened because of him teams with the, up with the FBI agent in solving a murder of a young woman on a Wyoming Native mm. American reservation hopes to get redemption from his past regrets. So this guy that is already cool. super depressed. I think his his son died is what happened. Mm. Um, but dude, it is this like the whole movie is just like as they continue to unravel like what happens. It's just it's yeah, it's awful. Um. And then it's that got a it's got a surprise cameo from my. Are you gonna watch this? I don't want to ruin it for you, or maybe you don't care. Yeah, I'm actually gonna put it on my watch list. What's it called again? Wind River. Wind. It's two words. Yes. Or are they okay? Yeah. From 2017. Yep, there yep. it is. So it's got Jeremy Renner, but yeah, because I won't I won't give you the uh, who the surprise cameo is from, but uh, yeah. Oh, you gave it a four. On oh, I Letterbox. love it. Very good. Very nice. No, I'll add it to my watch list. So I don't want to. It sounds. Sounds cool. All right. Okay. I, won't, I won't ruin it for you. I will move on. But it is a really, really good movie. All set in the snow. It's like, like you said, it's there's no room for sunshine in this movie at all. Sweet. Cool. Added to my watch list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. My number four. I don't know if you've ever watched this uh -oh. or heard of it, but we'll see is 30 Days of Night. Oh, I think I saw this in theaters when it came out. I did see it in theaters when it came out too. And uh, I watched it recently. This is, I forgot how fun, I liked it when I saw it in the theater back then. And I have to say it aged really well because they use practical effects for pretty much the whole movie. Mm. If they use CGI, it's probably here and there and you can't, I mean, you can see it, but it's not too bad. Yes. But again, this is taking place in a remote town in alaska and it is literally night for 30 days plus snow plus vampires i mean and like wicked vampires not twilight yeah. vampires sorry for twilight fans i mean i was a fan a long time ago and i get it but these are like scary and powerful they're mean vampires they're like mean they're very mean vampires yeah like the, like what they are i mean that's the thing that i always say like vampires are actually pretty powerful and scary creatures i just think uh pop culture has changed them into they've romanticized them oh, honestly for sure well especially as, i think twilight is the one that for sure did it but like interview with a vampire yeah. yeah a lot of them do that it's like a freaking grizzly bear right like our kids carry right teddy bears around a grizzly bears but if you were in the wild with a grizzly bear they would eat Oof. your throat you better run away right. well that's if you can honestly because I, I think you're screwed you are. I mean, did you watch uh, The Revenant? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, I particular. I don't 
particularly like that movie, but there's a brutal scene with a bear and it's just, I, it's, I think it's pretty realistic. Like, yes, they're so cute and fuzzy and no, don't mm-hmm. mess with a grizzly, especially if there's a, a cub yes. around. Yes, but that's what we've done to but, vampires. Um, huh? That's what we've done to vampires. We've made them little uh, lovable things and they're not. Exactly. I like that they are what they're supposed to be in this movie, which is mean and uh, very powerful. So my number four, 30 Days of Night. It's a good, good one. Choice. Good, good choice. I think uh, Ben Foster takes the cake in that movie, though. He is so good in that movie. I think, what what's his name? The he Visitor is. or the, the Stranger or something is his name? Yeah, I think it's The Stranger, I and, think. And he, like, wanders into town and wants, like, raw meat. And he's, like, because he's yeah. not a vampire. He wants them to turn him into a vampire. Yep, you got it. Which, yeah, I haven't seen he's that basically- in a long time. He's basically like what kind of lures the vampires in. It's like he's the beginning of mm. the chaos almost because he came from. He's kind of like the Renfield. The Renfield. Yeah. Is that the yeah. I would say he's kind of like that, but for the whole group of vampires. Yeah, hey, you remembered that for not watching it in such a long. I would have never remembered that. What can so. I say? It's all the cold plunges I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Helps Get it? Remember. It's just great for this theme. It is. It is. It's very, very cold. Um, okay, my number four. I actually just saw this movie for the first time a few years ago. I don't think it's that old of a movie, but um, okay. it's a movie based around Christmas. It is called Better Watch Out. Have you seen this movie? I have not. I've heard of it, but I have not seen it. It's very good. It's very up my alley. It's very. It's, it's like a sort of a whodunit um, okay. with a twist. It's there's fun. Mm. It's co- comedic. It's funny. Um, Basically, this girl goes to babysit these two kids. Well, this one kid um, who's older and has like a crush on her. And Mm. then like all this crazy shit starts happening at the house. And then they have to figure out like what's going on and who's doing this stuff. And um, yeah, I don't want to ruin it for you because if you know the twist, it's not as good. But uh, I really liked it. It became one of my favorite movies to watch around Christmas. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it this year because our Christmas was freaking very chaotic this year. Um, but yeah, better watch out. That is number four. It is set around Christmas. There's snow. It's cold. Nice. There's a cool death scene outside um, with a tractor. I don't want to give too mm-hmm. much away. It's not a tractor. It's actually a lawnmower, but uh, Ooh. yeah, in a tree. Anyway, nonetheless, number four for me, is better watch out. If you haven't seen it, I do highly suggest it. It is a Christmas movie, but uh, maybe next year, Christmas. Maybe next year. Okay. It it has popped up for me. I just, because I haven't ex- had a good experience with Christmas horror with, uh, what is this? I actually put it here because I didn't, uh, Black, Black Christmas and uh, Krampus. I personally mm. didn't enjoy those. Granted, Black Christmas, I watched a remake not the original. The new, new remake? N- no. Because it, it got remade twice. Yeah, which so I there's the 75 know. or the 78 version. There's the 2003 right. one. And then there's the new one that came out in 2018 or 19. Or it might have been 2020. Uh, no, I, I saw the middle one, which I, mm. I it was just so bad. <laughs> it, actually, the story was good. Mm-hmm. I liked... It was a dark story, but it was the the actresses. The sorority itself was so frustrating to watch. Harriet they the Spy just, is in that. Huh? Harriet the Spy. Harriet the Spy. Thank you. You're that, welcome. I know her as that, too. And um, uh, Oliver, Oliver is Hudson is in it. Kate Hudson's no. brother. That was him? Oh, God. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. notice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Gretchen from Mean Girls is in she it. Is. Um, but it was it was just so bad. And uh, I know it's very well. I know the original is popular. I saw part of the original uh, last month, and it's completely different. And uh, it was one of those '70s movies that didn't resonate with me. And I usually like those old movies, but that one I was like, eh, mm. I didn't really care for it. But either way, I'll check it out because it sounds like it's a good time. The one you mentioned. It the is. point is. I'll check it out. The point is you'll check it out. Better watch out. Yes. Uh, yes. Better watch out. Yes. This Christmas. 2024. Yes. it's it's. I mean, you know, you can watch it this week and pretend it's Christmas. That's true. That is true. Horror is 24-7 around here. So it doesn't matter. 
All right. Number three. My number three is the movie you thought I mentioned earlier uh, is The Shining. I put for number three. Funny enough, though, like this whole the whole movie isn't in snow. There is some parts that are not snowy, but Mm -hmm. I think for the most of the movie, it's cold and then a lot of snow. I have ranted about this movie everywhere. The I love this movie. It's my favorite horror movie for multiple reasons. And I know a lot of people don't like it. That's okay. It's fine. I'm okay if Mike Flanagan remakes it. Only him. So am I. It's fine. And uh, I don't know. I grew up loving this movie. I, I think it's great for snow if you're in the mood for that snow, especially isolation. A lot of these movies with snow go hand in hand with isolation, I've noticed. Now that I look at this list, at least my list, maybe yours too, like there's a lot of isolation involved, which makes sense, right? Because you get snowed in. Right. So. Right. Hmm. I think that's a, that's a big contributor to it is the fact that yeah. you're s- essentially stuck, right? You're it's just stuck. another form of, I guess, I guess when I think of storm movies, I don't think of like winter movies, but really winter, most winter movies are based around like a winter storm because the people are either stuck wherever they're at or they're yeah. stuck at home and can't get out, right? Or people can't exactly. get to them. So yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah. Oh my God, I just thought of one. Oh boy. <gasps> oh my God. I need to redo the list. Oh no. I, would it have I went like but... would it have went higher? Actually, yeah. Can I change my number five? <laughs> I don't I mean sure if you want to. You're kicking just the really lodge quick. out? I'm gonna kick the lodge out. Well you know I'm I'm okay in... with that. I know you're okay with that. The visit. The visit takes place in snow. There's snow in the visit. Oh, there is snow in the visit. And that movie is fantastic. And it's found footage. I didn't think of it either, honestly. I don't know how it just popped in my head. Okay, that was it. My number five is the visit. We're we're just changing it on the spot. All right, so your number five is the visit. 30 Days of Night is four (laughs) and three is The Shining, which I'm surprised The Shining is so high or low. Uh, how do you say that? Low? High? Low? Right in the middle. That's odd. I thought that would have been your number one. Ah, we'll get there. I guess. But yeah, it's not. Because I, I think these other two snow movies were mm-hmm. much more impactful to me. My top two. Okay. So, what's your number three? Okay. My number or, three, yeah. <laughs> ironically, we watch this every year. It's one Uh-oh. of our favorites to watch around the season. It's 2003's Black Christmas. <laughs> oh. oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, yeah, we love it. Dude. We sit around, we watch it, we laugh, dude. Seth I'm and I, so sorry. <laughs> Seth, Jess, and I used to watch it every year at Christmas. Oh, well. We'd be at the house it's- drinking and we'd throw on Black Christmas because it's so funny. Maybe that, because that's the thing. I went into it not thinking, I, I was so pissed by the end because, again, I think the story is actually really good with the the killer. I don't know what his name is Billy. in that one. The brother and sister, right. But it, it's it's the girls. They're so awful to me. And they, they're obviously front and center. So I'm like. Don't you think ah. they kind of depict what a sorority house would be like? They're all mean to each other and talk bad about each other and. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny to we just sit around and watch it and laugh. It's got How some funny. it's got some pretty good kills, right? And then uh he shows yeah. up at the hospital at the end because you don't think that he really exists and then Yep. There he is. Interesting. And That's it's is. interesting that you went so hard on it. And I was just sitting there like, Oh, she's really gonna love it when my number three is Black That's Christmas. Okay. That's okay. We had it with the lodge. And now it's Black Christmas. That's true. But you have to admit, like, Black Christmas falls right in line with the type of horror that I like. And yeah. The Lodge, which I don't like, falls right in line with the kind of horror that you like. So I think we're yeah. getting two very um, diverse mm-hmm. opinions here. But that's what makes these lists fun because you do, especially with this, usually if we're ranking a franchise, it's different. But when you're doing this, mm-hmm. you get a variety I had never heard of. You know, the one you mentioned about Jason and the snow, not Jason, you know what I mean? That was it. Um, and the Wind River, like, I would never know about that. So yep. I think it's great. Now we give variety. That is everybody. funny. That cracks me up. Though. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not Come saying on. that 
I think it was 2003. It might be 2005. I forget. Nonetheless, the early, early 2000s, 2000s Black yes. Xmas is like a, an award winning film by enemies. The reason yes. I have it here is because it's one that we throw on and just have a good time with, right? It's a favorite because yeah. we can watch it and, and laugh. Yeah, it's probably a bad movie, but. Yeah. It's one we have fun with, right? So that's that's why I have it up here. Because and again, we generally watch. I didn't watch again. I my movie watching since uh, the holiday break started has been. I haven't watched any movies at all. Like my, Harry Potter movies. We finished Harry Potter. I don't know if I told you that. Like Abby, yeah. Abby finally finished it. Um, we could talk about that later. But yeah, so like my yeah. I haven't been watching anything. So I like we hardly watched any. Um, even like Christmas movies, we hardly watched any. My movie watching since October has gone down because it turned into the trip plan, the whole big vacation planning that I was on mm -hmm. vacation, came back and just went into holiday mode, but it didn't include movies. Yeah. So, yeah, my movie watching went down drastically. I'm trying. I'm going to try to change it up. I change think it up. it's because Christmas was on a Sunday this year. And mm -hmm. I think I told you this. I traveled. The week before, because I always go out the week yeah. before and I see all everybody I need to see, and because it's the end of the year, so you know we buy them lunch and thank you for all everything this year. Then we do big dinners and stuff. But yeah, the office was closed Friday and I didn't know it. So oh. I was traveling and out like working on Friday, and then so I got home oh Friday God. late. Um, we had dinner here for Abby's family came over for dinner. We had pizza Friday night, Saturday morning. We got up and went to her sister's house and did another Christmas there for breakfast, got home. And like a couple hours later, my sister and her family came over for Christmas Eve dinner here and we hung out and then we got up Sunday morning, which was Christmas was Sunday, right? Monday. It was Christmas a Monday. Was Monday. Yeah. Okay. So I got home late Friday night. Saturday night was was it Monday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve was Sunday. Yes, you're right. So Saturday, yeah, yeah. we had dinner for Abby's family here. Sunday, we got up, went to her sister's house. Sunday night, my sister was here. Monday, we got up. Her dad, uh, we did Christmas with the kids. Her dad and his girlfriend came over like lunchtime. And then we were supposed to go to my parents' house for Christmas dinner, but dad was sick, so we didn't go over there. My sister and her family came back over for Christmas dinner because we were supposed to go to mom's. They just came to our house. Um, it's so like, and then Monday or then the next day, obviously Christmas was over. So like we didn't have any time in there to just like yeah. hang out and watch movies and do stuff. So, and I was gone the whole week before because of traveling. So I really think it, it was work. because like if Christmas was on like a Thursday or a Friday, I wouldn't have traveled the week of. Right. So yeah, we would have had that, that whole sense. week. So it was like, it was just like everything got crammed in. Yeah. Oh it was my wild. God. Yes. I know. That was, is a lot. Yeah, I mean, I left the house Monday and essentially get back till Friday, and then, yeah, yeah, no, no, there's no time for movies at that point. No, so, so my, my movie intake was very low. We did watch um, Violent Night with uh, David Harbor from Stranger Things. He's Santa in that movie. We we watched it. We liked it. We thought it was pretty good. It was funny. Not a great movie, but it was funny. So, anyway, I totally hijacked that. What is your number two? My number two is the thing. Ah, uh, which to me, that is the ultimate one of the ultimate in for ice frozen isolation, horror, paranoia. Mm -hmm. sci you can add in sci fi. It's very sci fi. I consider it a sci fi movie. Oh, yeah, for honestly. sure. For sure. Um, but it's for being an 80s movie. I mean, yes, you can see that, you know, the makeup and the effects, but I still think it's great what they did with it. Um, that whole sense of paranoia is really well done. I love, uh, what's his name? Great. Forgot his name now. Kurt Russell. Wonderful. Kurt Russell. Yes. You know, it's good to look at on screen. Yeah. He plays so, a great Santa Claus. Huh? He plays oh, a yeah. great Santa Claus. I've never watched those. What? Those are my favorite. I've, I, I don't know if I told you, I don't know who I told, so I don't think it was you. I'm not into Christmas movies, even like mm. generally not. You know really why? You know them. what the problem is. I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. Ruins it. I'm telling you, I don't even you know why. See? You, I don't even know why you guys celebrate it. I'm. T you see, we had this whole discussion. It's depressing. <laughs> uh, There's no Christmas spirit anyway. But uh, yeah, so number two, the thing. It's cold. 
it's spooky, it's bloody, it's gross, and uh, makes you pretty paranoid. Mm. So, number two is The Thing. We did that movie, the Horror Movie Crew podcast did that movie a few years ago, I think. I don't care for it. I also don't like sci-fi movies. Um, I think it falls into the same vein as like Alien, where it's all the same shit that happens and... yeah. Oh no, there's this, cre- look, I'm just dogging your movies and I shouldn't be, I'm sorry. It's okay. You know what, I, I started this with The Lodge and then you continued it with Black Christmas. So I feel and like we're it, back. Was, <laughs> it was my fault uh, that that whole thing happened. So it's okay. anyway, nonetheless, uh, I am not a huge fan of the thing, but uh, I also okay. just don't really like John Carpenter that much, if I'm being honest. And that's a John Carpenter I know. movie. So uh, it is a John Carpenter. Yep. Maybe it's his so. fault. It could be. It could be. I know there was a remake, I think, but I never watched it. I don't think it did. Uh, well, if well. you had watched it, Erica, you would know that in that movie, at the end, I think, you find out it is not actually a remake. It is a prequel. Oh, well, there you go. Had no idea. <laughs> I think they are. So do you remember the um, dog that gets out at, at the beginning yeah. of the thing? I think the, I think, and I'm sure there's people out there screaming right now telling me I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that base was the one they go to in the oh, thing. Okay. Got I it. I think. It's got um what's the gal's name? Mary uh Elizabeth we- Beth we- Elizabeth Winstead, Mary Beth Winstead or something. Do you know her? From uh one of the Mm-mm. Yeah, she's in it. Anyway, nonetheless. Is it a female cast? She is a female. I think her name is Let me see. A Mary Beth Winstead. Is that her name? Or is it Elizabeth? I don't know. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. That's Winstead. It. Yeah, I'm pr- I'm almost positive that movie's a prequel. Uh if it's not, we're just gonna say it is anyway. We're gonna say it is because it's a big paragraph right now to read. But it is oh. from twenty eleven. Uh she looks familiar. She's in, she? um, oh, which one? She's in one of the oh, final, final destinations. Is it the third one? Yes. That's I'm the one with the roller coaster, right? Yep. Oh, I know who she is. She's in Scott Pilgrim. And in uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who it is. Yep. I know who it is. Yeah. So taking the form of a prequel, the 2011 revival, also titled The Thing, which isn't confusing at all, explains what occurred at the abandoned Norwegian camp explored by R.J. Ah. McCready, Kurt Russell, and Dr. Copper in the Carpenter film. Got it. So it is a it's a prequel. OK, well, I might check it. I see it has bad reviews, but I'll. I like this whole isolation cold horror, mm-hmm. so I might. Check it out just for the hell of it. See what they did. It's probably a repeat of the original, just in a different base. I honestly don't remember. I think I watched the prequel before having ever watched the original because I just knew I wasn't going to like the original. And I think someone at the time, 2011... I don't know, maybe Abby and I got it from the Red Box or something? Mm, and watch good it. old red box the old red box anyway okay uh well okay uh my number two i can't believe you have the thing before the shining that really blows my mind is i thought the I shining know. was like your favorite movie am i thinking it i know it's jess's favorite movie but maybe i'm getting you too confused no no no. it is mine it is mine but number one i i don't want to always put it for everything because i i have to be fair like i think these two my top two for this theme are mm-hmm. better at the whole winter interesting thing. Well, I'm just letting Especially. you know if there, if scream had taken place and there was like a fake winter, let's say it would have been here just for shits and giggles. Okay. For shits and gigs. Let's just say that yeah. they uh, had a homecoming dance and scream, even though this movie takes place in California. Mm-hmm. And they had a homecoming dance called the uh, the Winter Formal, and they went to said dance, and they had fake snow coming from the ceiling. I would have put Scream number one on this list. I know, yeah, because that's the kind of person I am. I can see that. Thank you. Just so you know, my mom put Scream six in her top five of twenty twenty three. Oh, that it wasn't number one. No, I don't remember what her number. Oh, her number one was uh, Evil Dead Rise. Ah, I can't argue with that. That was a good movie. Well, I can't argue because Scream Six was better, but that's fine. I don't. I'm not upset. I'm not yeah. going to hold a grudge against her. Yeah. So, 
She she threw me for a loop on that. I'm like, really? Wow. Okay. Good to know. Hmm. So intriguing. Well, I agree with her. I think she's a very <laughs> smart gal, and that was a great pick by her. Um, my number two again, ironically. No, oh, no. What did I trash now? <laughs> we generally Krampus? watch this every Christmas. Krampus. It's one of our favorites. We love it. We think it's hilarious. Is it really? Tony Collette is amazing. <laughs> She is. I will say the cast is great mm -hmm. in this movie. I just, mm -hmm. I don't like creatures to begin with. So there it is. Mm -hmm. Number like, two is Krampus. We're just like back and forth on this today. I love it. It takes, it takes, this is, okay. So um, this is the horror version of Family Vacation. Of Christmas, yeah. of, of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah. This is the horror version of that. You got all these family members come over you don't like. They're all problems. Yeah. And then they get snowed in and then Krampus shows up and really shows you how terrible these people are. That's a good compare. I do like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That one mm. makes me laugh. That one's a good one. But that's a good uh, comparison. But I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm not upset. Again, this is right in my alley because it's funny. Yeah. Uh, there are some really good kills in it, and it's just a fun movie to watch around Christmas time. So, uh, and it is again in golf's winter. They are there's the big yeah. snowstorm that comes because of Krampus, and they're snowed in. So, yeah, my number two is Krampus. Even though you, I thought that was hilarious when you were like, "Oh, Black Christmas and Krampus. Those are so <laughs> stupid movies. They're terrible. They suck. Anybody that likes them is an idiot." <laughs> I will say, I'll give Krampus one big thing. It has a spoiler for anybody. I love the unhappy ending of it. Mm, yes. So it did get points for that. And the cast is, uh, what's the other guy? I like him a lot. Adam it, Scott, I think is his name. Adam Scott. Is yeah, that right? I was going to call him Ben Scott, but it's Ben in Parks and Rec. But yes, Adam Scott. Yeah, like We him, call him so. Derek because that's his name in Step Brothers. I didn't even remember he was in that. He's I this, only saw that he's once. The, uh, he's... Um, the brother, John. I think it's is it Will Ferrell's brother or John C. Riley's brother? I think it's John C. Riley's brother. He's a real dick. Like the oh yeah yeah. I think it's John C. Riley's brother. I think. I think no, I actually no. I think it's Will Ferrell's it? brother. I think is it? it is. Yeah I don't yeah know. yeah. Because yeah, it is. I think. I just want to argue yeah. now. That's fine. We can I'm just continue kidding. arguing. I don't really want to argue. I don't like to fight. <laughs> I'm non-confrontational. Even though you didn't like my prick of Krampus and number two. But what is your number one? My number one, not to be confused with a Disney movie, is Frozen. Okay. I watched this movie for the first time, I think, last year, because it was free on, on Tubi. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was terrifying in a very like normal way. Like This could conceivably happen yes. to someone. I think you've seen it, because I, I saw you rated it, so I, I know you've seen it. I just, so it's three friends that get stuck on a ski lift. That's it. That's the premise of the movie and they have to get out. And I, it, it was horrifying from everything that happens and how shitty the situation is. And if like that happened to me, I'd really be so screwed because as it is like, I've never seen snow, blah, blah, blah. But I had missed the boat on this movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it aged well. Um, I, I think this is early 2000s also. There is like a cheese factor to it because it's from that mm. era, but I don't know. I It's not enough to deter me from the movie. I really enjoy it for this theme. Like, and I think it's rewatchable. I'm dying to watch it again and be like mortified at how shitty this situation is. But yeah, I really like this movie. <laughs> it's not a great situation. We actually did an episode on it uh, two or three years ago. Oh, okay. I forget. I don't know if I picked it or Seth picked it. I can't remember, but uh, I had never seen it before. Yeah. And I don't remember what I rated it, to be honest with you. But uh, I yeah, think it, you were in the middle with it's, it. it. It's The situation's 100% uh, avoidable, but it was very terrifying. And fun fact, yeah. Kane Hodder, who plays Jason Voorhees in a lot of the Jason movies, he actually is the guy driving the uh, snowplow. Oh, okay. Remember, because they Neat. think, they're like, oh, look, there's a snowplow. Let's try to get it. And then he doesn't yeah. help him at all. At all. Yeah, do you That's really think so... do you really think that wire would have been that sharp that it would cut through their gloves? 
I don't know that I was wondering that um, it's just everything, that whole situation is, and the, even the freezer, I'm going to call it freezer burn, but the mm. frostbite, frostbite freezer, burn. freezer burn, <laughs> Whatever. you could call it that close enough, but frostbite, all of it, like, is it, could it get that bad? I presumably think so, but that wire, I mean, think about it. It's holding so much weight. It has to be pretty tough, right? Yeah, but I just wonder if it would really slice. Be... Like, it would have to be like a razor blade sharp to cut their gloves, like it was doing. Because it tries true. to to uh, like go it was across smooth. it. Yeah. Well, you think they put some mm. sort of coating over it so that it wouldn't do that to uh, cut things like that? But I don't know. Seth said he yeah. thought maybe it would be that sharp, so it's hard to tell. But then, yeah, the decision but you have to make the movie that fantastical. Movie, that's so true. You got to add some more scenarios. That's your movie. I think the one thing that bothered me about the movie was how mean the one friend was to the girlfriend. Yes, he if was. I, okay, because so, I was trying to, but then like, uh, he was, and I'm like, why you're so mean? <laughs> like, and then they decide to like jump down and the legs break, and it's like I don't one know guy if, did. I think the boyfriend did. I don't know. It was one of the guys, and that was horrifying. And then the wolf. Oh my god! It was just so many scenarios that. Yeah. Well, I think he, he doesn't take his skis off, right? Doesn't he jump down with the skis on? I believe so, because he thinks... I don't know how he thinks he's going to land okay to then just be able to ski away or whatever. Yeah. Ski off. Doesn't yeah, it didn't end well for that guy. Oh, he's the one that gets eaten by the wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do any of them make it? She makes it, doesn't she, the girl? I believe... No. I don't think anybody makes it. Hmm. I think she seemingly makes it, but then oh, doesn't. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think, because I remember when the movie ended, I was like, oh, oh my God. Because aren't they, they're like shut down for like the weekend, aren't they? I believe, or for a couple of days. And then there, yeah, I think there was the guy on the snow plow that they thought they were going to get their attention yeah yeah because it was going to be for a few days and they were going to reopen in like four days or something and it's like they're going to obviously freeze uh yeah or die of yeah. starvation no water That'd all of terrible. it <laughs> all of the above it's so bad i just like there had to have been a better way to get down is there i don't know i don't know i don't know this either. is this movie and fall had the fall. same effect Oof. I mean, fall was different because it had the whole height. It was just different. But they both gave me that same sense of how do you get out of this? Like, this is so such a bad situation. Yeah. And the fall, the thing with fall is that they chose to do that, right? To actually climb something that high. And fro in the frozen one or in frozen, I mean, yeah, they chose to go on the ski lift, but they didn't choose to get stuck there. Like they got stuck there. Mm. I don't know if they were running late or what the issue was. They decided to get on. They talk, Didn't they talk the guy into letting them get on after last call? And then he, like, they oh, did a yeah, switch, yeah. A, ch a switch change, and the guy didn't know that anybody else got on. Yeah. So I guess in that sense, they screwed up, but, you know, they were just trying to get back to their cabin or whatever it is. And I don't know. It's just these are two situations that are so unavoidable. They're avoidable, but shitty to be stuck in. Mm. And, it's these kind of movies, kind of like home invasion movies, where you put yourself in that character's shoes and you're like, what the hell would I do? Yeah. I think what yeah. I think what I the scenario I came up with that I would do is I think that we would have had to have taken our jackets off mm. and tied them in into like a rope. Rope. Because you don't have to get all the way to the bottom. You just have to get like ten feet lower so that when you drop down you don't break your leg. That's true. So I think I would have tied, made a rope out of the the jackets or pants or something so that one of us could get down. Get down. Yeah. And then go get help. That's true. And That's I think I they done. might have thought of that, but when it was too late. I forget because don't forget a cup. At least one of them gets down. Okay. Don't they? I thought I think so, but I think it's the wolves that are now around because yeah, they waited night. too long. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, the the original guy who who dropped, he gets eaten by them, but there's enough like meat and yeah. scent that's left around, so it keeps attracting 
yeah, it's just it's just bad. That that's why I chose this as number one. It beat The Shining in that situation. It's just such a scary situation in my mind because I just put myself there and just ugh, the elements are unforgiving. That they are. And this next one, my number one, is a uh, one of my. I don't want to say favorite Stephen King adaptations. I do like it a lot. I forget mm. what I rated it. I'd be interested to see what I rated it now on Letterbox. Do you have Letterbox pulled up by chance? I can right now. Uh, my movie number one is Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. Yes. I had it as an honorable mention. Oh, dude, I love it. We did an episode on it a while back. I think at the same time we did Frozen. We did Frozen, Dreamcatcher, mm. and um, The Thing, I think, all in the same time period. But I enjoy that movie a lot. I like the story a lot. I go yeah. on a cabin trip almost every year with my friends. So it reminded me a lot of that because we just get together and drink and hang out and play cards and just basically like get away for a weekend. So it yeah. starts with that, but then it goes terribly wrong. And then you add in the whole uh, backstory with how they met when they were kids and how they met this guy, this kid named Duddits. And then Duddits. this kid had yeah. these powers and this, the way the movie starts and transitions in to that story. Stephen King has a way with telling like childhood stories that really get you yeah. uh, into the storyline. So I thought that was really cool. But then they add in this whole other aspect of like aliens and like he's here to hide from this other thing, which like, again, that's way outside of what I'm normally into, but it had Timothy Oliphant in it, which I like him a lot. Uh, one of my favorite actors. And then they also have the actor, oh, his name's going to escape me, but he's the actor from uh, the show Billions. He's the main character in Billions. He's the one that actually gets um, possessed by the worm things, and he's the one riding around being crazy on the... Uh, Damien Lewis, I think? Yes, Damien Lewis. That's the one. Yep. Yeah. So, like him Oh, a Jason lot. Lee is in this. I didn't even remember yeah. that. Yeah. So this, the cast is really good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Morgan Freeman. Morgan, I was I almost said Samuel L. Jackson, but yes, Morgan Freeman is the uh, crazed, uh, the yeah. crazed military guy. But yeah, no, so it's a really good story. They're like trapped in this cabin. It's like con there's a bunch of comedy in it, along with some of the horror. But like that one scene where all the animals run by the cabin, you're like, what is going on? Like it's I don't know. The whole movie's done really well, but yeah, it's probably, that's that's my number one is uh, Dreamcatcher. I knew that was gonna be number one. But the rest of it was kind of just a la carte fell in the blanks. But do you like you Dream gave it Catcher? a four and a half? Yeah, by okay. the way. there we go. So, yeah, I, yeah. I really enjoyed uh, Dreamcatcher. I watched it. I've seen it a couple of times. It's been a very long time and I did enjoy it at the time. I'd be curious to see it again. And I actually have not read the book. I started the audio, mm. but then I didn't finish it. Cause I don't, I don't know why, who knows? Cause I get, you know, like everything you, you start something, you get distracted. Um, I don't know if it was a library rental audio, so I probably lost it and then forgot to go back to it. Gotcha. But at this point I'd have to start it over because I don't remember that much, but, uh, the book was pretty creepy already. Cause it was, uh, one of them was like blowing up in the cabin, basically like all this oh, yes. blood everywhere. Uh, the animals, running around and uh, going back in time with Dud. It's that he really is the master of the friendship storyline. Yes, he, he knows is. how to do it. And when they translate it on film, they usually out of anything in Stephen King movies, they do translate that really well for the most part, the friendship part. Right. So, um, but yeah, it was one of my honorable mentions. It's not higher because honestly, because like I said, I haven't seen it in so long, but it's definite. It's all snow. That's for sure. That it is. That it is. That one is all snow. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely a great movie. I haven't watched it in a long while. I need to go back and revisit it. But uh, that was yeah. the first one on my list that I was like, okay, I got a couple of winter movies and bam, that was it. <laughs> you did it. I did. I made it through. I did a top five winter themed horror movies. Um, this was probably the hardest list for me that we've done thus far. I had a feeling that's that's why I wanted to do it. I'm like, let's do something challenging. That's OK. You'll come up with one and I'm going to be like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll I don't struggle to. That's nah, fine. Don't but... worry. That's fine. Great. But we did it. <sighs> yes, we did. I don't have any papers over here. Um, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap it up? Stay warm.
Stay warm. I will stay warm because it is cold here. It's going to be cold for the foreseeable future. We're supposed to have a winter storm coming through here this weekend, I guess. But uh, Does that mean snow, I assume? Well, that's the thing. It looks like it's all rain, but the problem is it gets cold mm. at night. So it'll be like in the 30s during the day, and then it'll get down into the 20s or into the teens at night, and then all that will freeze. Mm. Um, I don't it. have to go any. Oh, uh, yeah, Saturday and Sunday snow, highs 30s, down in the 20s to the night. So, yeah, it'll be. Wow. So all that garbage will freeze. But they take, like, here we're used to it. So all the roads are clean, and it doesn't really matter. Plus, we're, oh, okay. So. We should be fine. Uh, but the internet company that we use has been texting me all day saying that they are preparing for the winter mm. storm and that uh, they are expecting outages. So, Oh, fun. Yes. Fun. Yeah, so Great. we'll see. Great. But um, in Stay that warm, case, <laughs> I don't have the patron things. Thank you to all the patrons that give us your hard-earned money to listen to us talk about horror movies. This episode will not come out until the end of January, I think. Uh, January releases, if we're in the future now, so I think they should have been the final cocktails episode at the cabin was the first week of January. The second week of January will be the in the news episode we're getting ready to do. Okay. Yep. The third week of January will be this episode. This, this, I yep. think. And then I think the final week of January will be the 2023 Stabby's Awards. Woo! That's right. Yes. I so, almost forgot about that. Very important. All the patrons should have their uh, December t-shirts. I know a few of them got delivered today. I was getting texts today saying that they were delivered. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I guess we're out of here. Bye. 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 Yeah. 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 See you, Doc.